Praise the Lord. This is the true worshiper of God. God bless you, brothers and sisters. It is good to be back. Amen. I want you guys to know the Lord didn't have to forgive us. The Lord didn't have to forgive you, but he did. Amen. The Lord did not have to forgive you, but he did. Amen. And you know, brothers and sisters, God's love made us over. His love made us over. Come with me to John chapter 1. Look at verses 12 and 13. The title of this message is, You Have the Right to Become Children of God. Amen. You have the right. God gave you the right to become children of God. Amen. So we don't have any excuse. And I, I know that Satan uses this weapon called trouble. That's what he uses against the children of God. He has a weapon called trouble and Jesus says in this life we're going to have trouble amen that's why we are to put on the full armor of God so that we will know the schemes of the devil and Jesus also said that his purpose for coming here was to destroy the works of the devil. And he told us what those works were. He told us those works were murdering. To murder. He came to destroy that. Because there is death and life in the tongue. Also. Lying. That's right. Satan one of Satan's works is lying and murdering. Do you hear me? You can murder someone with your tongue. That's right. With your tongue. With what you say. Amen. God is good. I, I got another, ordered another microphone. I hope this thing works better than the other one. But um, the title of this message is you have a right to become children of God. Look at John chapter 1. <clears throat> Look at the 12th verse. But to all who believe, as you know, I read from the New Living Translation. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And hit that notification button. Amen. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Look at verses 12 and 13. But to all who believed him. New Living Translation, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with physical birth, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan but a birth that comes from God. A birth that comes from God. Amen? A birth that comes from God. Brothers and sisters, we're taking this thing called being reborn again lightly I don't think you really understand it let me read John chapter 1 verses 12 and 13 I want this to sink, sink into your head but to all who believed you hear that but to all who believed Jesus but to all who believe the word of God but to all who believed him 
and accepted him. To all who believed him and accepted him, accepted his word, accepted his commandment. Amen. Accepted his life and why he was sent. God gave the right. He gave us the right to become children of God. They are reborn not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. It's like God creating Adam and Eve all over again when it comes to you. It's a birth from God. Now with that comes a beautiful and perfect relationship with God that you have with the Father. But I know that what came with that birth is a whole lot of troubles. We know that. We know that. In John 16, John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus acknowledges that life would not be easy and will include hardships. But he assures us, those who believed him, that he gave the right to become children of God. He assures us that despite these troubles, we can find peace in God. We can find peace in him. Because he has already overcome all the troubles. He has already overcome all those troubles. You will find safety in Christ. That's why he tells us to be still in him. Be still in him and you will know that he's God. Because he overcame those troubles. And, and, and those troubles involve people. He, he told us that in John chapter 8, verses 42 to 47. And a lot of us have a problem accepting this. Look at verse 42. John chapter 8 verse 42. I want to talk about these troubles just for a minute and where they come from. Because troubles have a lot to do with people. They have a lot to do with people. That causes the trouble. Uh, and, and the people that cause the trouble, they are known as children of the devil. Now everybody's created by God. Everybody's created by God, but not everybody is God's child. Pay attention. Look at John chapter 8, look at verse 42. John chapter 8, look at verse 42. New Living Translation says, Jesus told them, if God were your father, you would love me because I have come to you from God. I am not here on my own, but he sent me. Look at verse 43. Why can't you understand what I am saying? It's because you can't even hear me. For you are children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. This is where your trouble is. See, this is why Jesus tells us, in this life, you're going to have trouble. He tells us this. But I want to show you where the trouble comes from. It comes from the devil and the devil's children. They're just like him. Watch this. 
and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with the with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. See, a lot of people's trouble comes from lies that the liar told. It comes from being deceived by the deceiver. You have a lot of troubles like that. The Apostle Paul had a lot of troubles and hardships. Jeremiah had a lot of troubles and hardships. The Son of God, Jesus himself, had a lot of troubles. And it was caused by people. It was caused by people. And then Jesus points out these children of the devil. He says... From the beginning, he has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So when I tell the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Which of you can truly accuse me of sin? And since I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Anyone who belongs to God listens gladly mm -hmm, to the words of God. But you don't listen because you don't belong to God. Wow. John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. I'm going to read that one more time. And then we're going to go to the next verse. John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. The title of this message is, God gave you the right to become children of God. Verse 12. But to all who believed him and accepted him. But I just read you in John chapter 8 verses 42 to 47. Those people did not believe Christ, nor do, did they accept Christ. Nor did they accept Christ. Nor did they accept Christ. And he told them, no, nah, you're like your father, the devil. You're just like him. You are a murderer like he is, and you are a liar like he is. They don't accept Christ. They don't accept his word, nor his commandments, or his lifestyle, or anything that he is telling them. They don't believe him at all. They naturally don't believe him because of who they are. This is troubling. This is troubling. Because they want to kill Jesus. They want to stop his mission. They want to stop God's plan of salvation. They want to stop peace. They want to stop love. They want to stop salvation. They don't want that. They want confusion and strife. That's troubling. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth. You are, listen, child of God, you are reborn again. But I don't think you know how to live this life. But even though Jesus tells us how to live it, for some reason, we keep living like the world. They are reborn not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Oh my God. Come with me to 2 Corinthians. Look at chapter 5. Chapter 5, look at verse 15. You have the right to become children of God. Verse 15 reads, 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, not 1st. 
2 Corinthians, look at chapter 5, look at verse 15. What does it say? He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. You're making these decisions. You're grabbing these careers. I understand you have to work. You want to make money. You want the the finer things in life. But don't forget you have been reborn again. You have a right to become a child of God, but you have been reborn again. You've been birthed by God. In verse 15, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Um, I want to go up. Look at verse, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Either way, Christ's love controls us. You hear that? Jesus loves, his love controls us. I told you, his love made you over. His love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our own old life he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves instead they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them is anybody that's a believer are you living for Jesus are you living for a family member are you living um for the job are you living for the career are you are you living for your contract what who are you living for amen come with me to first john chapter two. First john chapter two because god has done something for us brothers and sisters he's done something for us first john chapter 2, look at verses 3 and 6. 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 to 6. I'm sorry. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims I know God but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. Oh, but those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. So we have to live in Christ. We have to live in Christ. We have to live in God. We have to obey his command. We've been reborn again. Those who have those who believe and have accepted him, he gave them the right to to become children of God. A lot of people say, I am a child of God. Child of God. Men and women are saying, they are children of God. But they're not living their life as Jesus did. Keep reading. But those who obey God's words truly show how completely they love him. That is how we No, we are living in him. Verse 6, those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Now, that, 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 that just excludes, excuse me, everyone in the building called church. All of us. Let's just say all of us. All of us, me included, let's just say everybody that's called themselves a child of God are not living their lives as Jesus did. Why? Well, number one, we we probably don't know that we have been reborn again. And we are no longer um, living our lives, living to ourselves. 
We're not living for ourselves anymore. So you have to stop living for yourself and start living for Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but, but still, you're going to have troubles. You're going to have troubles. But when you put the full armor of God on, you're going to be able to identify who these devils are. And what makes your life more troubling is that you don't know that this person in your life is a child of the devil. And then you don't know what to do about them. But God says, forgive your enemy, right? You can forgive them, but you don't have to trust them anymore. And start, okay, I forgave you, so I'm going to live with you like I have forgiven you. I'm going to trust you. Um, I'm going to give you the keys to my home. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just going to accept you as an honest person. No, God told you to forgive them. God told you whatever they have done to you, do not retaliate on them. Do not retaliate. Do not return evil for the evil they have done for you. Done to you. That's how you forgive. But you don't hang with your betrayer. <clears throat> you don't give your betrayer, your enemy, the keys to your house. You just forgive them. And that was my problem. I would forgive those who have done me dirty, lied on me to have me thrown in jail for, for something I didn't even do. And I would forgive them and go right back to hanging with them. Naive. Dumb. I was just dumb. But God seen, God seen, he said, you know what? This, this boy don't know what he's doing. I mean, he's forgiven them. And he's loving them, but he's, for, he's forgetting. I call them an enemy. I told him to love his enemy. I told him to pray for his enemy. I told him to forgive his enemy. I did not tell him to give the enemy access to his home. I did not tell him to um, rub elbows and hang out with the enemy. I just told him to forgive him. Now, let me explain to you. When I told you to forgive your enemy, I was telling you do not retaliate on your enemy. Don't do to your enemy what your enemy has done to you. That's right. So I had that all wrong. And they just kept kicking me um, in my behind. Dragging me all through the city. Because I opened the door to my enemy. When I should, when all I had to do was forgive them and not retaliate on them. But I did something different. God seen that I was naive, dumb, stupid. Yeah, that's why they did you like that. I told you to come from among them. Your enemy is that unbeliever. Your enemy is that liar. Your enemy is the one that has no place for me in their heart because they cannot love a fellow believer. I told you to come from among them. I told you to pray for them. I told you to forgive them. I told you do not retaliate. Do not return evil for evil. For the evil they had done to you. But I told you to come from among them. You let them talk you in to being their friend. You let your enemy talk you in to being your friend. And they talked you into that, pulled you back into that web so they can do you dirty all over again. People, stop inviting your enemy into the light that you're in. Your enemy does not want to be holy like God is holy. God told you to be holy like he is holy. But your enemy does not want to be holy like God is holy. Your enemy hates you. Whether that be a relative, a parent, you better read your Bible 
the Bible says that that one that 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 person that lied on you hates you. They hate you. That's why they lied on you. They hate you. That's why they lied on you. They're not your friend. And your forgiveness is not going to stop them from hating you and lying on you. That's why God told you, come from among them. Have nothing to do with them. Why am I telling you this? Because God gave you the right to become a child of God. And when you are a child of God, you have to know these things that I am telling you. Oh, glory to his name. Glory to his name. Now, this is how you destroy the works of the devil. Look at 1 John chapter 3. I want to show you something. Look at verses 5. Come with me to verse 5. Watch this. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins, and there is no sin in him. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. See, we have to live in him. When you are reborn again, you're living in him. And when you're living in him, you will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. These are people who refuse to obey God and accept the truth. Okay. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. Verse 7. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous. Even as Christ is righteous. Even as Christ is righteous. When people do what's right, it shows that they are righteous even as Christ is righteous. The children of the devil hate for you to quote this and be this. The first thing come out their mouth, you ain't perfect. You think you know everything. You ain't perfect. Wow. I'm going to read it to you again. When people do what is right. Can you do that? You can because you are born again. You've been reborn. And you've been reborn by a birth from God. And he gave you the right to become children of God. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous even as Christ is righteous. Do you know anybody like that? But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil. Mm. You've heard your family tell you, maybe your grandmother, maybe your mother or your father would tell you, I don't want you socializing with that girl. I don't want you to associate with that boy. They're going to get you in trouble. Right? But you don't listen. Because that's your friend. The devil has been your friend for a long time. And the children of the devil has been your friend for a long time. And you found nothing but trouble. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. If the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil, you living in God and God is living in you. What does that mean? That means that you are destroying the works of the devil just by obeying God. I told you, come from among them, have nothing to do with them. Forgive them, pray for them, but 
But when you forgive them and you pray for them, come from among them. But your forgiveness is not going to change them. Jesus was speaking to people and he told them. He didn't give them an out. He didn't say that, well, um, I believe that one day you children of the devil are going to change and become um, children of God. Nah, he didn't say that. Read John chapter 8, verses 42 to 47. Read it in your King James Version if you feel that the New Living Translation got it wrong then. It's going to say the same thing. Do that. He didn't say that these children of the devil were going to become children of God. See, listen. Don't call yourself a child of the devil. You were a sinner. Saved by God's grace. So you got sinners. And then you got children of the devil. And then you got children of God. Sinners can be saved. They listen to the Lord. But the children of the devil ain't don't want nothing to do with God. Or you. Just to make your life a living hell. Uh-huh. Some of you have already experienced that. Because you didn't know who you were. You were lost. You were a lost sinner. You got hooked up with this man. Who was a child of the devil. You got hooked up with this woman who was a child of the devil. Because you were lost. That's what happens when you're lost. But see, but God knows how to rescue his people. See, once, once that light bulb click on in your head, uh, he can come and rescue you. He can get you out of that bad situation that you got yourself into. Why? Because he gave you the right to become children of God. And you have all this power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Those who have been born into God's family do not make it a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. I'm going to have to probably read this every time I preach. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God God's life is in them so they can't keep on sinning because they are children of what? Children of who? Children of God. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. And when you don't know this, you have a lot of trouble in your life that you just can't shake. When you don't know this. And it, it involves people. Get these people out your life or get out those get, get out their life. Get out of the children of the devil's life. Get out of their life. You, are, you have become a child of God. So what you been knowing this devil, this child of the devil for 20 years, 30 years? That's a child of the devil. That's not your brother. That's not your sister. Come from among them, have nothing to do with them, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Y'all need to hear this. I'm in the 34 minutes. Let me hurry up. Taking too long. Ephesians chapter 2. What did God do for us? Huh? Ephesians chapter 2. Look at verses 1 through 6. Once you were dead because of your disobedience. Once you were dead because of your disobedience. 
See, when you're dead, you can't do nothing. You're dead. Look at a dead body in a, in a, in a coffin. It can't get up. It can't get up and walk. It can't move. It can't do nothing. You're dead. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, right? You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. Mm -hmm. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our, by our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Now listen, those who believe this and accepted God, he gave a right to become children of God. Do you hear me? See, once you were dead, you didn't know nothing. You were dead, you didn't know nothing. You were born into sin. All of us. But when, when God raised Jesus from the dead, he gave us life. We're no longer dead, but he gave us life. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. Look at that. So now we are united with Jesus. You're united with him. That's why you can't continue on sinning. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. Look at verses 8. Look at verse 8, 8 and 10. Ephesians chapter 2. God saved you by his grace when you believed. You see that? When you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Mm. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. See, you can do good things now. You can do good things now. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. Look at verse 14. What does verse 14 say? Hmm. No, Ephesians chapter. Hold on. Hallelujah. Sorry about that. Come with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Hallelujah. He gave you the right to become children of God. Look at verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. 
Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. You do not belong to yourself. You don't just do what you want to do when you've been reborn again. You've been born of God. Okay? For God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. While you twerking it, while you tattooing it up, throwing up your gang signs, while you filling your body with strong drink, alcohol and liquor, cigarettes and weed, you were bought with a high price. So when, when, when you were reborn again, all those things should have stopped. But they didn't. And you're calling yourself a child of God. You're lying to yourself. And you won't be able to get the victory. You're being deceived thinking you are getting the victory in the name of Jesus. And you're not. All you're doing is putting a nail in your coffin. And that coffin is going to rest in hell. You're not getting out. Stop being deceived, brothers and sisters. Stop being deceived. For God brought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. You've been reborn again. Now, come with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, what does it say? Look at verses 4. Look at verse 14. 2 Corinthians. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? Why am I telling you this? Because God gave you the right to become children of God. This is how you become a child of God. You have to separate yourself from unbelievers. You have to know that you've been bought with a price. You no longer belong to yourself. You can't just do whatever you want to do to this body. You can't BBL this body. You got to stop doing certain things to your body and ingesting certain things because this is where God chose to live. He's calling you his temple. We do a lot of preaching and shouting in church. But is anybody being told this? Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them. And walk among them. I will be their God. And they will be my people. Therefore come out from among unbelievers. And separate yourselves from them. Says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things. And I will welcome you. And I will be your father. And you will be my sons and daughters. Says the Lord Almighty. You've been given the right to become children of God. But you can't continue on living like this. You can't continue on sinning. You can't continue on being among unbelievers. Oh, bless his name. Look at Jeremiah. I'm going to get you out of here now. Look at um, Jeremiah chapter 31. Look at these two verses, verse 33 and 34. Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 33 and 34. It reads, but this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my instructions deep within them. And I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives saying, you should know the Lord. For everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already, 
says the Lord, and I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sins. This is what God did for you. Hallelujah. Look at Jeremiah chapter 7. Look at verses 22. Let's, let's look at it again. Verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 7. Look at verse 22. When I led your ancestors out of Egypt, it was not burnt offerings and sacrifices I wanted from them. This is what I told them. Obey me. God wanted obedience. Obey me and I will be your God and you will be my people. Do everything as I say and all will be well. And look what happens. But my people would not listen to me. They kept doing whatever they wanted, following their stubborn desires of their evil hearts. They went backwards instead of forward. From that day, your ancestors left Egypt until now. I have continued to send my servants, the prophets, day in and day out, but my people have not listened to me or even tried to hear. They have been stubborn and sinful, even worse than their ancestors. Tell them all this, but do not expect them to listen. Shout out your warnings, but do not expect them to respond. Say to them, this is the nation whose people would not obey the Lord their God and who refuse to be taught. Truth has vanished from among them. It is no longer heard on their lips. Shave your head in mourning and weep alone on the mountains. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken this generation that has provoked his fury. Mm. Last but not least, Hebrews chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. What does it say? But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and I will write them on their heart. I will be their God and they will be my people and they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives saying you should know the Lord. For everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already and I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the title of this message is God has given you the right to become children of God. But it's something you have to do. You need to put on the full armor of God. Keep it on. That's something you never take off. Because Satan is going to and fro. In and out the earth. Seeking who he may devour. Now Satan has agents. They're called his children. And you need to have that full armor of God on. So you would know who's who. And then be obedient to God and do what God says to do when you encounter the children of the devil. You need to know what to do. And trust me, John 16, verse 33. This is the one about troubles. John 16, verse 33. I'm going to leave you with that. Because a lot of children of God got troubles. And they believe that God is not helping them. No, God is helping you. You just don't know how to work what he gave you. You don't know how to operate in what he gave you. You don't know how to operate in God. So this is how you do it. Look at, look at this. Look at verse 31. Jesus asks, do you finally believe? But the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now when you will be scattered. Each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. You who feel alone, don't. If you've been going through a divorce, if that loved one left you, 
if you had to separate from someone and now you feel alone, don't. You're not alone. The Father is with you. You hear me? The Father is with you. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. Verse 33, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. You will have many troubles. But take heart because I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. See, listen, it's like this. You see the trouble. But you have to grab hold of Jesus. You just have to trust him. You got to know that he's with you. He hasn't left you. He hasn't left you. He's with you. Why? Because he gave you the right to become the children of God. And with, with that right comes these privileges and these blessings and this protection. Be still in God. The trouble is going to pass. Let it come. God is going to lead you through all that trouble. Yes, he is. Believe that. Because see, that's what the children of God. See, the children of God got that mindset. You're wondering, man, how, how, are, how is she doing it? How is she able to, you know, go through it? How is he able to go through all of that? Ain't no way I would have put up with that mess. I would be in prison. They would have threw me under the prison if somebody had done that to me. No! The child of God is free. Because vengeance is the Lord. God was testing your character. God is testing you with these troubles and these trials. And Jesus says, you see how I overcame the world with this testing and these trials and this trouble? You were in trouble on the lake in a storm and I walked out on the water and told the waves and the wind to shut up and be still, didn't I? Says the Lord. So when trouble comes, I want you to see Jesus walking on water coming your way. And he's going to shut all that mess down. Why? Because you were being still in him. You believed in him. You didn't give in. You sat right there in all the trials and troubles and sorrow. And Jesus came in and told everything around you to be still. Glory to his name. This is the true worshiper of God. You've been given the right to become a child of God. It's time that you use those rights. Use those rights and stand in Jesus' name. I love you and I'll see you soon. Hallelujah.